Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. So today we're in our AV8B Harrier and we're looking at navigation. Now we've got three principal types of navigation in the Harrier. The first is INS waypoint based navigation. INS is inertial navigation system. Uh, this is mainly a tactical system. It's used for uh, navigating between waypoints, targets, things like that. And I've already got a video on that explaining how to use INS waypoints, editing waypoints and bombing on waypoints. Uh, the second type of navigation is TACAN, tactical air navigation. This is more of a general use navigation. And then the third is AWLS, which is a type of LS, an instrument landing system, which is used specifically for landing on airfields if visibility is zero or very low. So the two that we're going to look at today is TACAN, first of all, and then ILS. In fact, we're going to um, wrap them up into one approach onto a runway. So the first is TACAN. This works by the aircraft communicating with TACAN stations and allows us to navigate to that station with symbology. Now that TACAN station it could be on the ground, in which case it's usually going to be at an airport. It could also be on a ship, uh, an aircraft carrier for instance, or it could be a plane. It could be an air-to-air refueling plane or just a normal fighter jet plane. It's radio based and it's two way so the so the, the aircraft communicates with the TACAN station, the TACAN station talks back and that means that we can get an azimuth uh, bearing to the TACAN station and we can get a range and this services all ranges really up to kind of a hundred plus miles so it can be used for general navigation mainly to airfields. If we wanted to have a look to see which airfields have it then we can uh, go to the FCM map here, we can click on this guy here uh, Kutesi, and we can see that it has TACAN and it has a TACAN code associated with, with it 44 X-ray each airport or each TACAN station will have an individual code with it it'll be a number and followed by X-ray or Yankee now as for the ILS that works a little, little bit differently so on the runway of each airfield that is equipped with AWS there is a station transmitting a beam of energy along the ideal glide slope down right down to the runway and our aircraft is going to intercept that signal and then we're going to get symbology to show us our azimuth all the way to the runway and also to show us elevation the key difference between TACAN here is that TACAN doesn't show elevation at all AWS does give us elevation again all the way down to the runway. TACAN is mainly showed here on what I call the HSI, the Horizontal Situation Indicator, and the ILS, uh, sorry, the AWS in the Harry is shown mainly on the HUD. So before we actually use the systems, let's see what today's mission is. We are here, we are uh, 26 miles away from Kutesi, which is where we're going to land. Visibility is literally zero all the way down to the ground, so we're completely reliant on instruments. Our current heading is thus. Uh, what we need to do is to navigate onto what we call a runway radial. A runway radial will be, you can see the direction of the runway there, and if we draw a line in the direction of the runway heading out, that is the runway radial. So we're essentially going to follow the dotted, the yellow dotted line until we intercept this radial, then we're going to turn into the base along the radial, we're going to use TACAN for all of this, until we get to about 10 miles out where the ILS or the AWS becomes effective, and then we're going to turn to AWS which will take us all the way down to the runway. So TACAN first of all, AWS afterwards. So let's start getting things set up. First First thing, let's just get ourselves trimmed out so we're happy, we're good there. Right, let's get Tacon on the go. So we want to be in nav mode here, or we can be in V-Store, but nav mode primarily. Tacon on. We want it uh, 44 X-ray, we saw was uh, our Tacon station. Enter. Uh, and we've got some options, let me just pause. We've got X-ray or Yankee here, we can cl click on that and it can be X-ray or Yan Yankee. Ours is 44 X-ray. Tone, I can't work out what that does. It's presumably some kind of audio beep, possibly if we stray too far away from the TACAN signal, I'm not sure. Uh, we've got three options to use the TACAN, transmit, receive, receive only, or air-to-air. Air-to-air, obviously, if you want to go for a tanker. Receive only means it's a passive, uh, we listen only, we don't transmit, which means we that we only get the bearing, the azimuth, and we don't get the range. I have no idea why you'd ever want to use that, but that's there. And the basic transmit receive for talking to ground stations, which allows so you can get the azimuth and the, and the range. Now, let's have a look at our HSI first of all. First thing we need to do is engage TACAN. So unpause, click there, TACAN. What we can see now is that we've got this, uh, I don't know what it's called, but I just call it the triangle. 
where the Takan station is and it's right there you can see we've got our moving map overlaid and it's at Kobilele Air Base sorry Kutaisi Air Base there so that shows it and uh, we've got our range to it there on our HUD 25.7 kilometers to the current Takan station and as for Azimuth on our heading tape at the top here this sign here shows where the Takan station so we'd need to chase it left basically and um, until this became in the center and then we'd be heading towards the Takan station however that's not our job remember what we want to do is intercept the radial so we're going to use another cool function uh, that we can use in conjunction with the Takan which is setting our course line so what I'm going to do is back to the menu what we want to know is the exact course of the runway now what we can say is that it's runway 08 that we're landing today if we click on here runway 08 is what we want today uh, however that's not accurate for us we want to be a bit more accurate so what we're going to do is head here we're going to draw a line with the um uh with the line tool here perfectly along the runway now look at the top we can see it is heading seven four so basically we want to set a course line for zero seven four and that that will draw our radial here on the hsi for us which is a really useful tool so let's go and do that we've uh, got our course line uh, our course uh, not there so we're going to use the mouse scroll wheel to do it we can see the course um, there it's going to take a little while and got it there so that is our radial so we're going to keep flying this way until we intercept our radial but you say the harrier instrumentation including tag including everything on the harrier is magnetic north it's based on magnetic north everything on this f10 that i'm drawing here is true or map north there is a difference in the caucuses between the map uh, true north and the magnetic north of minus six degrees so we've got to convert this so we've got to take the 074 we measured earlier and take six of it to get to the magnetic north and that's what we want to type in here if we don't do that then the harrier will be six degrees out and we will lose we won't be able to find the runway and we'll die so we're going to change that now to um uh, 068 Okay, so it's now corrected for magnetic north 068. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our HSI here to fly to the radial here. Once we hit the radial, we're going to turn towards the base or the Takan station, which is there. One thing to note at this point is Takan is ever so slightly inaccurate because that Takan station is not actually on the runway itself. It's a couple. It's about 100 feet off to the side of the runway, a building uh, that you've probably noticed at most uh, military airports in the Caucasus. So just bear in mind that. Another thing to point out, Takan station is only available at NATO bases. So in the Caucasus, it's the Georgian bases that have Takan because they're NATO. In the American maps or Nevada, I think most of them will have, or all of them will have Takan, the military ones anyway. Uh, in Persian Gulf, probably none of them because it's not NATO. So there's something to bear in mind. And on the Russian ones, not NATO either. Right, so we're going to unpause now, get to the radial, turn in, and then worry about our AWLS. So off we go. And we want to start reducing our speed. A landing, a uh, ILS landing like this is very different from a normal visual landing. A normal visual landing, you'll come around on a circuit and a very short final approach of about a mile, half a mile, something like that. With an ILS, no visibility landing like this. It's a very long approach and a very slow pr approach. Um, so we're gonna wanna get ourselves down to speed in time for when we turn on to AWLS, ILS at 10 miles from the runway. So I'm gonna start reducing speed now. We're approaching our Takan line now, sorry, our, our radial now. I'm going to zoom in so I can get a bit more detail. The more we zoom in, the uh, more, more uh, detailed we'll be able to stick to that line. And we're going to start turning now to intercept the line. 22 miles from Takan station. Okay, let's turn that. So we're going to look at the heading tape at the top of the HUD and match the Takan pointer there. There it is. And I've accidentally gone past the radio, so I'm going to deviate back, try and get online. And we start dropping a bit of altitude uh, as well. The rule of thumb is by 10 miles, we want to be about 3,000 feet. So that's one, that's 300 feet per 
a mile, which gives us a three degree glide slope. And that is a standard airfield landing is a three degree, three degree descent. So we're pretty much online now, so let's turn in again. I lose a bit of altitude. Okay, whoops, gone past the mark. Let's try and get that back. Uh, now we're on mark now, 19 miles out. Pretty much bang on that radial now, so we're happy with that. Um, we're going to get our gear out now, do everything we can as far out as we can, so we have to do less Thank you later. Gear. That's Land gear out. Gear. Adjust the trim. 18 miles. Right, now we've got nothing really to do now until we get to 10 miles, so next we're going to set up our AWLS, our ILS system. So what I'm going to do is bring up this now. This is copied from the uh, Harry and Manual. And you can see each airfield, or, or there's the columns are the, the, I, the AWS channel, the airport, the runway at the airport, the TACAN code associated, and the glide slope. So the channel of our airfield, which is Kutesi, is 03. That is the AWS channel that we're going to type in. The runway is 08, we know. The TACAN 44 X-ray, as we know. And the glide slope, negative 3 degrees that we know about anyway. So let's go and set it up. So we're going to unpause, just check we're stable. Good. Right, uh, where is it? AWL here. It's saying we're on channel 1 at the moment. Uh, we've got here why don't we just go through it live so we're going to click on channel we're going to click on three enter that has set our channel up as Kutesi for AWS we've now got AWLS set up next we're going to click on the glide slope that's three so that's giving us three degrees which is showing the glide slope of this airfield we could change that now we could just put six in and it would give us a six degree glide slope when it gives us our um, information that we need to follow our symbology so we can adjust the glide slope if we want to do i've no idea where you'd ever want to but it can be done okay next is azimuth Azimuth is current zero. That is the deviation from, and I just realized I'm deviating here, uh, but that is the deviation from the runway radial. So zero degrees would be perfectly on radial. If for some reason we wanted to deviate by, say, 10 degrees to the right, then it would give us an approach like that, 10 degrees to the right. I've no idea why you'd ever want to do that because it would bring you on, on the wrong radial, but it's there if you need that for some reason. That's azimuth. Elevation. Elevation is currently zero. Uh, that is currently the level of the runway which the IW, which the AWLS knows if you wanted to offset that for some reason I have no idea why you would again you can offset that in imperial feet and next is TACAN click on TACAN and it's already come up with 44 that's because we've already logged into the TACAN station as we did earlier if we weren't already connected to the TACAN then here we would type in 44 enter and it would connect us automatically to the TACAN to give us our range here so that's something to bear in mind if um, we could run, we could land at an airfield that does have AWLS but does not have TACAN. So bear in mind, and then it would just be negative here and we wouldn't get any TACAN range. It just will make it more difficult. Uh, so that's that. We're going to turn AWL off on now just to show you the symbology. I've got it turned on now. And here's what we've got. We've got one line here. This is called the localizer. This tells us our azimuth. Essentially, we want to keep this in the center of our path vector here. If we can do that all the way down, um, then we're on the perfect radial for the runway and it'll guide us all the way down. Once we get within about 10 miles, we'll also have a glide slope line that'll appear that's a horizontal line. And it's exactly the same except in terms of elevation. We want to keep it in the center of our uh, path vector here. Um, sounds easy, it's not. It's really friggin' hard. Almost impossible, in fact. I'm almost certainly going to bugger it up. But we shall do our best. Um, that's all I've got to say about that at the moment. Now we're not, we're going to switch to AWLS at 10 miles. Um, so we're going to go back to Takan now and get back on our radial. Where is Takan? There it is. So we've, we've come off our radial accidentally, so let's get back on. And we want to get down to 3,000 feet by the time we hit uh, 10 miles. Now, another important thing. You don't want to be messing around with getting your plane dirty, flaps, nozzle positions and stuff when you're on the AWLS leg, the 10 mile leg. You'll, you'll stand no chance if you do that. Everything has to be done, including getting on speed, before you get to 10 miles, okay? So we're gonna do that now. We're gonna bring our nozzles down to 30 degrees, power up, trim down, flaps down one. Oh, flaps to auto, yep, that's what I want. Okay, losing altitude. Right, let's get back on this radial if we can. Okay, we're pretty good. Need to lose some more altitude, need to lose some throttle, need to lose some speed. 
and this approach will take a long time that's just how these ILS approaches work especially with the Harrier uh, we're slightly to the left so if we just correct slightly right now we want to keep our approach around 150 knots um, and then we're going to lower that just at the very end to about 130 um, although as you'll see it's quite difficult to keep it straight right we're back on the radial so let's head back to the Takan on the heading ribbon altitude is good 3800 at uh, 13 miles so everything's looking pretty sweet to be honest perfectly on that radial now everything's looking good losing too much speed let's arrest that bang on the radial 12 miles 3400 feet so losing too much speed let's arrest that Well, we've got some time, check, gear down, flaps down, nozzles to position, yes, all good. Losing too much speed, power on, trim down, and we're going into the soup. Now, this is where it starts to get ugly. Now, this is where I start to fail, because I lose situational awareness, I've just lost the radial, bloody hell. Okay, we're slightly offset, but we can correct that pretty easily. And we're about to hit 10 miles, so we're about to switch over to ILS any minute now. So we're just... Yep, that's 10 miles. So time to switch over to AWLS, AWLS now. Bosh. And let's go over the just symbology again. So we've got the glide... Uh, sorry, the localizer here that we're interested in for our azimuth. The, lo uh, the glide slope here for our altitude. Elevation and glide slope, speed here we're interested in, altitude here we're interested in, and our DME uh, tack and distance to the end of the runway there. So right, so I'm going to zoom into the HUD now, I'm going to just focus this and try and keep everything else out of my mind. I'm going to try and keep speed, speed's got a bit too high so we're going to try and take that down. We're off the localizer, so we're going to have to head to the right now to get back on that localizer. The glide slope wants us down, so down we go. Watch the speed right now the localizer is going to be about minus three degrees so let's just bear that in mind um, key now is just to keep really as smooth movements as we can and the idea is in an ideal world to keep the localizer and the glow slope ticked uh, like crossed in the path vector in in the middle there if we can do that we're golden Never quite that easy, but we'll try. So it's already shifting over to the left, so let's try and get that back. Glide slope is good. I'm going to try and do my elevation movements with my trim instead of my stick, if possible. See, my uh, localizer swung right to the left now, which is bad news. Uh, but I'm hesitant to chase it too far. If I chase it too far, I'll get even further off course. And I don't want to look down at my um, HSI now either. I want to focus everything I've got on, the, on this. A bit below the glide slope, so we're just going to level off just a little bit. Let that glide slope catch up. off a bit more speed is good we're on speed glide slope's good it's just that localizer we're having trouble with now distance 4.6 miles and we've just gone over the glide slope but that was a bit of an error and bring that back down glide slope's good just having trouble with that localizer still three miles oh I can see something oh, all my sensors are getting messed up now 
over the glide slope. No, I've sped up too much. Oh, I'm getting a little bit freaked out now, I'm not going to lie. Leveling out a little. Can we get that localizer back in line? Below the glide slope now, 500 feet, 1.7 miles. Need to leveling off to get that glide slope back. Speed's going down too much, that's the problem now. Speed back on. Level out a little. Above the glide slope now. We're very close now. I know we're very close to that runway. Right, don't lose it now. Don't lose it now. I'm losing situational awareness a little bit now. It's okay. I can see a runway. I can see a runway. There is a runway right below us. Right, don't panic now. What's our speed? What's our speed? Speed is okay. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Ah. I don't know about you, but I am sweating my bits off. So we're starting to get a little bit wiggly at the end there. The closer you get to the runway, the harder it gets. Uh, the more uh, effect your small movements have on the localizer and the glide slope. The further out, it's, uh, it tends to be a bit easier. Uh, but that's it, really. So that was pretty much zero visibility, and we managed down, uh, made it down for a perfectly safe landing. Uh, I think we've covered everything, so we've been over TACAN, just to review, been over TACAN, putting core slides on TACAN, how to connect to different stations, air, sea and land stations, AWLS, how to connect to different airfields, different airfield signs, how to use a symbology, how connect to, to connect it to TACAN. Right, uh, that's about all I've got to say really, I hope that helps and see you later.